بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How are my students? I hope that you're happy and healthy and ready for today's uh, listening which will be the listening and the pronunciation But before that, let's take some exercises to refresh our minds and our memory about what we took previously in this unit uh, Unscramble the sentences Here are some scrambled sentences uh, and I want you to unscramble them and put them in the correct order. You can see the first one here is uh, already done for you. Got a car accident. He into nearly. So he nearly got into a car accident. Number one, barely anything you've eaten. And of course, at the end, the uh, exclamation mark. So again, barely anything you've eaten. How do we unscramble this sentence? How do we put it in the correct order? Yes, very good. You've barely eaten anything. You've barely, the adverb comes before the verb, eaten anything. Very good. This, uh, sorry, the is enough bright light. And then the question mark. The is enough bright light. Is the light bright enough? Of course, once you see the question mark, you know that it's a question and begin it with the auxiliary verb is. So it's a yes, no question. Is the light bright enough? Yes or no. Name his, no, scarcely, I, and then the full stop. So how do we put this sentence in order? Let's check the answer. I scarcely know his name. I scarcely know his name. Number four, very goes he to frequently Asia. Very goes he to frequently Asia and then the full stop. So, excellent. Let's check the answer together. He goes to Asia very frequently. He goes to Asia very frequently. Frequently. So frequently, does it mean a lot? Yes, it means a lot. He, he goes to uh, Asia very frequently. So let's continue here. Number five. Cooked the perfectly are not potatoes quite. Then the full stop. So how do we unscramble this one? It's a little bit long sentence. Very good. The potatoes are not cooked quite perfectly. You have to put them in the oven more. The potatoes are not cooked quite perfectly. Disagree completely, I. Then the full stop, of course. So this is an easy one. Yes, I completely disagree. I completely disagree. Uh, number seven, extremely that dangerous is road. Extremely that dangerous is road so what's the answer for number seven okay let's check the answer together the road is extremely dangerous the road is extremely dangerous and remember extremely came before the adjective number eight planning vacation they've finished almost their full stop planning vacation they've finished almost their full stop. So this is the last one. This is actually a little bit easy one. Yes, they've almost finished. Almost finished be before the verb. They've almost finished planning their vacation. They've almost finished planning their vacation. Are they finished? No, still, they've almost finished. Then let's jump to the other exercise here, page 104 in the workbook. Circle the correct adverb of degree in each sentence. Number one, there aren't enough or scarcely rooms for us in this hotel. Some people can stay here, but other people will have to go to another hotel. So there aren't, very good, there aren't enough rooms for us in the hotel. There aren't enough rooms. There are a few rooms left. So some people will have to go uh, to look for another hotel. Number two, it is nearly or it is extremely cold 
in the winter in Finland, people need to wear a lot of clothes to stay warm. Is it extremely cold or nearly cold in the winter in Finland? Of course, it's extremely cold. That's why you have to wear lots and lots of warm clothes. Number three, I'm almost out of money. I'm completely out of money. I only have 10 reals left. So he still have some money. He still have some money. Is, he, uh, is it correct to say, I'm almost out of money or I'm completely out of money? When I say I'm completely out of money, it, it has, I have zero. So this is obvious, I'm almost out of money. Number four, it's hardly or too late to go to the museum now. I'm going back to the hotel. This is an obvious one. It's too late to go to the museum now. It's closed now. That's why he is going back to the hotel. Number five, the flight was rather or barely bumpy. I feel sick now. The flight was uh, rather or barely bumpy. They had some turbulences. I feel sick now. So it's rather. The flight was rather bumpy. I feel sick now. If it was barely bumpy, he wouldn't feel sick. Maybe one or two, but it was rather bumpy. I feel sick now. Number six, there were just or quite enough seats on the bus for all of us. Every seat was taken after we got on. So was there just enough or quite enough? Yes, there were just enough seats on the bus for all of us. Every seat was taken after we got on. So it was the correct amount of uh, passengers for the seats. Again, there were just enough seats uh, on the bus for all of us. Every seat was taken once we got on the bus. If you remember our previous lesson, the conversation, we were, we were talking about uh, flights and flight, the flight attendant and the passenger and how he was mistaken. Uh, he took the wrong seat and he was arguing. And I asked you, what do you do when you board the plane? And we said that uh, we check for our seat. Then we go to put our bags in the luggage place. Do you have to sit in your assigned seat? Yes, of course. Do you prefer a window or an aisle seat? And remember aisle with a silent S here. Don't read it aisle, it's aisle. The S is silent. Also, this is the conversation between the attendant and the passenger and how he was mistaken and he wanted the window seat and she said no. At the end, we figure out that uh, the window seat was actually his seat and he replied with the word awesome. So, and we took the real talk, the red eye, it means overnight because you're sleepy and your eyes turn red. Uh, crummy means bad, I don't get it, I don't understand. Drag means disappointment. Awesome means terrific. So let's jump to, the, to today's lesson, the lesson objectives here. To name stuff to take along when you're traveling or backpacking, use the stress in compound nouns correctly. So we'll be learning about the compound nouns. Have you ever gone on a backpacking trip? This is a backpacking trip where you take your uh, backpack you, you, when you take your backpack and you go uh, hiking or mountain climbing, uh, this is the backpacking trip. Have you ever gone on a backpacking trip? Yes or no? For me, no, I didn't before, but maybe most of you did. And notice here the word backpack. You can feel that it consists of two words, the word back and the word pack. So it's now a compound noun backpack. Have you ever gone on a backpacking trip? This is uh, a question for you. Either you say yes or no. So you can see these pictures here. Of course, people are different when they go backpacking to what they take with them. Do you take your cell phone? Do you take your flashlight? Maybe a little bit of a video game to entertain yourself there. Here, the, the first picture here, the man is taking his camera with him and a container for water, some herbs, etc. And the second one is focusing on the camera. He has lots of uh, camera equipment. So which of these things did you take on your trip? If your answer uh, was yes, 
that you have been backpacking before. So what uh, the things that you did, uh, did take with your trip or what would you take on a backpacking trip? If you haven't gone before and you want to go, what do you think uh, the essentials to take with you? So here are some examples. Uh, rain jacket, expensive boots. Do you need exp expensive boots out in the wild? Uh, toiletries, trash bags, water bottle, two or three bandages, smartphones, sunglasses, box of bandages, tweezers, expensive jewelry, guidebook. So, of course, you know now some of these are important to take, some of these aren't. So, it's up to you whether you, what you want to take. You can take some things that some people disagree with. So before we listen, remember to prepare your pen or pencil and a pen and take notes while you're uh, listening. So listen, but don't write your answers now. Don't write anything now. Just listen so you can comprehend the, uh, the, uh, what you're about to listen. Listen to the experienced traveler. So this is an experienced traveler. Listen to him talk about what to pack for backpacking trip through Europe. Most of people go uh, backpacking through uh, Europe. So listen to him so you know if you want to do it later what is important to take and what isn't. Let's listen now. The most important rule of thumb when packing a backpack is to pack light. You may think it's a good idea now to pack that pair of expensive boots and your smartphone. But later you will undoubtedly find yourself wishing you hadn't brought these things. One common backpacking tip is to pack everything you think you need, and then take out half of what you've packed. In addition to items you obviously must bring like toiletries and a few changes of clothing, don't forget to pack essential items such as a light rain jacket, a fast drying towel, and some first aid equipment. It's important to pack some bandages. However, just pack two or three bandages, not a whole box. Tweezers also come in handy for everything from removing ticks to taking out splinters. It's also a very good idea to throw a couple of trash bags in your backpack for dirty laundry, wet items, or garbage. Aside from what you should pack, it's also quite important to consider where you should pack each item. Nothing is quite so frustrating as having to dig through your backpack to retrieve an item that is buried at the very bottom. Keep items which you will need to access often, such as your sunglasses, your water bottle, and your guidebook in an easily accessible front compartment. And one final thought, you know that expensive watch your parents bought you for graduation? Leave it home. The same thing goes for all expensive jewelry and equipment. Unfortunately, things have a way of getting lost, stolen, or broken when you're backpacking. So only take items you won't be horrified or heartbroken to lose. So now we know that backpacking isn't as easy as we thought. Even the order of how you put your things in the bag is uh, you have to consider what you put at the top of the bag and what you put the, at the bottom of the bag, the things that you frequently take out of the bag and the things that you need maybe once a day. So it's not as easy as we thought. So let's listen again now. Listen to the experienced traveler talk about the backpack for backpacking through Europe. Tick the correct mark, the items that he recommends bringing. So now listen again, take notes, try to figure out some of these that, you, uh, that he mentions. So listen again and remember to take notes while you are listening. Let's listen again. The most important rule of thumb when packing a backpack is to pack light. You may think it's a good idea now to pack that pair of expensive boots and your smartphone. But later you will undoubtedly find yourself wishing you hadn't brought these things. One common backpacking tip is to pack everything you think you need, and then take out half of what you've packed. In addition to items you obviously must bring like toiletries and a few changes of clothing, don't forget to pack essential items such as a light rain jacket, a fast drying towel, and some first aid equipment. It's important to pack some bandages. However, just pack two or three bandages, not a whole box. Tweezers also come in handy for everything from removing ticks to taking out splinters. 
it's also a very good idea to throw a couple of trash bags in your backpack for dirty laundry, wet items, or garbage. Aside from what you should pack, it's also quite important to consider where you should pack each item. Nothing is quite so frustrating as having to dig through your backpack to retrieve an item that is buried at the very bottom. Keep items which you will need to access often, such as your sunglasses, your water bottle, and your guidebook in an easily accessible front compartment. And one final thought, you know that expensive watch your parents bought you for graduation? Leave it home. The same thing goes for all expensive jewelry and equipment. Unfortunately, things have a way of getting lost, stolen, or broken when you're backpacking. So only take items you won't be horrified or heartbroken to lose. So these were his uh, recommendations for what to take and what not to uh, take with you while backpacking. Of course, he said to leave expen expen expensive things like your watch or jewelry because they tend to get uh, lost or maybe stolen. So now that you have ticked uh, some of these uh, answers, you have ticked them. So let's listen for a third time now, just to make sure that you've answered correctly. Listen and check your answers. Listen now and check your answers. The most important rule of thumb when packing a backpack is to pack light. You may think it's a good idea now to pack that pair of expensive boots and your smartphone. But later you will undoubtedly find yourself wishing you hadn't brought these things. One common backpacking tip is to pack everything you think you need, and then take out half of what you've packed. In addition to items you obviously must bring like toiletries and a few changes of clothing, don't forget to pack essential items such as a light rain jacket, a fast drying towel, and some first aid equipment. It's important to pack some bandages. However, just pack two or three bandages, not a whole box. Tweezers also come in handy for everything from removing ticks to taking out splinters. It's also a very good idea to throw a couple of trash bags in your backpack for dirty laundry, wet items, or garbage. Aside from what you should pack, it's also quite important to consider where you should pack each item. Nothing is quite so frustrating as having to dig through your backpack to retrieve an item that is buried at the very bottom. Keep items which you will need to access often, such as your sunglasses, your water bottle, and your guidebook in an easily accessible front compartment. And one final thought, you know that expensive watch your parents bought you for graduation? Leave it home. The same thing goes for all expensive jewelry and equipment. Unfortunately, things have a way of getting lost, stolen, or broken when you're backpacking. So only take items you won't be horrified or heartbroken to lose. So let's check these items now. Rain jacket. Yes, of course, because when it rains, you wear the jacket and you will be safe. What about expensive boots? No, he didn't, he didn't uh, uh, recommend to take expensive boots. What about the toiletries? Yes, of course, and also the trash bags for your uh, dirty laundry or even the garbage that you throw. So you don't throw them, you don't throw them out in nature, you put them in a uh, trash bags. What about the water bottle? Yes, of course, and also two or three bandages. What about the smartphone? Did he mention something about the smartphone? No, so he said to leave it. What about sunglasses? Yes, he also said uh, sunglasses. You might take your smartphone just to uh, know where you are. You open the Maps uh, application. Why not? What about the box of bandages? No, he said no. Just take two or three bandages. And the tweezers. Yes, the tweezers. So you can remove if a small thorn is in your hand, you can remove it with a tweezers, expensive jewelry, of course he was against that, and the guidebook, of course, so you know where to go to. Maybe the guidebook contains a map, a paper map, that's why he left his smartphone. So now we jump to the pronunciation part. Words like backpack and water bottle are called compound nouns. Compound, when you put things together, they are compound 
So this is uh, the compound nouns because they are made of two separate nouns. They are made of two separate nouns. The stress goes on the first part of the compound noun. The stress goes on the first part. For example, you say water bottle, water bottle. We stress the word water on the compound noun. Say, uh, say each sentence, then listen if you see the stress of the compound noun correctly. The first one, throw a couple of trash bags in your backpack for dirty laundry. So we have here trash bag, trash bag. You put the stress on the first part. Also backpack, backpack. Always stress the first part. Keep your sunglasses and water bottle in easily accessible front, front uh, compartment. Sunglasses, also the word sun, you have to stress the first part here. Some people like to bring notebook or journal to write about their travels. So the word here, notebook, notebook, you stress the word note. You packed everything except your toothpaste and toothbrush. So toothpaste and toothbrush are compound nouns and we stress the part uh, of the tooth. You say toothpaste, toothpaste or toothbrush. Lastly here, I look for a postcard in my mailbox every day. I look for a postcard in my mailbox every day. So here, the second part of the question here, find the compound noun in the passages, the previous passages about hotels and the, com uh, the conversation you read. Underline and practice reading them loud. Remember to stress the first part. Remember, we stress the first part. So this is the conversation we took before. Of course, there is more than one here. Let's just figure out some of them. For example, here the word bedrooms. Bedrooms, it consists uh, originally of the word bed and room, and you put them together, bedrooms. Or uh, maybe the word sea life, the word sea life. Or here maybe you say undersea, undersea. So there are a lot of examples here. The second one here, very good it's the word widespread it's actually wide and spread when you put them together in a compound noun it's widespread in recent years capsules uh, capsule hotels have gained a widespread popularity also remember to stress the first part here in the hotel in brazil the word catwalks catwalks the aisles between the hotels the above the trees, cat walks. So it cat, it's a cat and walk. So we put them together, cat walks. Also the final one here, when you say overnight, to stay overnight, the word over and night, if you put them together, if you compound them with each other, it comes the overnight. You say overnight, stress the first part, the over part. And the conversation that we took previously, can you find the compound noun here? Yes, you can see it in the first line, actually, the word seatbelt. And remember to wear your seatbelt every, every time you go in your car. So seatbelt, the word seatbelt. And with that, we reach the end of the lesson. See you next lesson, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfirka wa atubu ilayk. السلام عليكم